Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cute lunch bag. This is an insulated lunch bag and of course with all my tutorials I will have a blog post which is linked below as well as the information icon. Over there you'll find all the measurements and links for all the products I use to make this bag. So if you're not already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course smash that like button as the kids say these days. Okay, so for this tutorial, I will be using a canvas fabric for my outer fabric, and then the rest I'm going to be using cotton. I'm using the canvas fabric also for the straps, and that is these pieces. And then I have these little cinchers that I'm going to be using. I'll have links for these little notions over at the blog post also. And then this silky cord that I found over in the children's beading section in Michael's. So if you don't want to do insulated bag, you can of course skip the step, but if you are using it for the purpose of a lunch bag, then you're going to want to have some sort of insulation material. Um, there is a product called Insul Bright. I'll have that linked at the blog post, but I just cut a piece out of a really crappy cooler I got over at the dollar store. So the first thing we're going to do is work on that little cinchy part, the fabric that's in the middle. And we'll take those two pieces and we will put those right sides together. I'm putting a pin one inch up from the bottom and we're not going to sew that portion. So we're just going to start sewing at the pin all the way down with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So like I was saying, because I live in such a remote part of the world, only 15 minutes away from the US border, it's sometimes hard for me to find things. So I couldn't find Insul Bright around here. And I wasn't about ready to spend too much money on Amazon. So yeah, I just cut it out of a cooler that I got at the dollar store. So, you know, just you can find these resources. Just, you know, go into the dollar store and see what you can cut up. <laughs> okay, so now after that, we're going to be pressing our seams. So we're just going to open the seam and then we will use our iron, obviously. I'm using this, um, it's sort of like a, it's for sleeves, but it really is helpful in things like this. I found it at the um, secondhand store, so if you ever see those and you wonder if it works, because I don't really make clothes that often, you can use it for things like this. I could still get, I could still do it with my, my ironing board, but why not use the fancy things? <laughs> and it was only $2, so why not? So now we're just going to sew beside that seam on either side. So I'm only going to do it like a millimeter away. So we're going to do once on the one side of that seam, and then we're going to do it again on the other side of the seam. And this is just going to kind of finish off the um, that portion that we didn't sew, and you'll see why very soon. So again, I'll do that on the other side. And this is how it will look. So from here, we're going to just hem that portion and we're gonna fold it down about a quarter of an inch. And then we'll fold it down again, basically down to as far as it can go. As you can see, it stops because that's where we our seam goes up to. And then this is going to be our casing for our little silky cord. So we're just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And then after that, we're going to sew all the way around. See there, this is where our little hole is going to be to insert our cord later on. And then we're going to sew all the way around. So we're doing it right against that edge there, just so that we can have a good casing, depending on what you plan to use, if you're using um, a larger cord or a ribbon, so it's whatever you want to use. And now this part is done, so we can place this aside and we'll start working on the handles of the bag. So like I said before, I made the handles out of canvas just so that they're you know, good and sturdy. I'm going to take this and fold in the one side about half an inch. I will fold the other side a half an inch and then we'll fold that in half. 
This is just a common strap that I like to make. I do have a video all about strapping. I show you how to make three different strappings. If you want to check that out, I will leave that in the card, which is in the information icon in the corner of this video. So now I'm just going to sew down either side of the strap and then this will make it nice uniform and look like a strap. I like to bump my machine up to about a three stitch length also when I do top stitching. So after that, then we can start working on the actual body of the bag. So we're gonna take our large piece and then we're gonna take our insulating material. Because this has a shiny side, we're gonna face the shiny side to the inside of the bag. So I'm just going to put the dull side on the back of the outer fabric. And then I'm going to fold it in half lengthways. I'm gonna line up the sides and then I'm gonna pin that all into place because I'm going to be sewing down the two short sides. The fabric that I cut out of that horrible cooler that I got at the dollar store, this is very delicate. I have never worked with Insole Bright, so maybe you can let me know in the comments um, if it is more of a fabric-y material, but this is a little bit delicate, so you have to be careful with it. Um, but it still works good, so I would totally recommend this in a pinch. So now I'm going to take my lining fabric and just the same, I'm going to fold that lengthways and then also up both short sides. And with this material also, it does not like sewing machines. So I would probably recommend maybe switching to a Teflon foot if you have it. But if you don't, or you're just too lazy, then you can just help it by pulling it along in the back of the machine. <laughs> I won't tell anyone. <laughs> and then of course, don't forget to take your pins out. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then we'll just go ahead and do the lining the same. After that, we are going to um, corner off the corners of the bag. I'm going to be cornering it off so it's nice and wide and, and more like a boxy shape. Um, so I'm just going to sort of fold the seam down to make the corner look like a triangle. I'm going to use a ruler and measure out four inches. And to make sure that your triangles are symmetrical, if you have a ruler like this, just make sure that your two inch mark is lined up with that seam. I did that for both corners of the outer fabric and then I'll do that for both corners of my lining fabric. And I'm just, I'll just pin that into place just to hold it. And then we'll sew along those drawn edges. So I hope you're enjoying this tutorial so far and if you haven't already subscribed, I do um, fun little videos on Tuesdays and then every Friday I have a free tutorial for you guys. So definitely join the community and follow me on Instagram and Facebook down below if you do decide to make this project. Okay, so now we're just going to snip off um, those triangles. Make sure you don't cut the, the stitches, of course, but about a quarter inch away is fine. And we're gonna do that for the lining as well. So now we're just about ready to start assembling the whole thing. So this is how it looks um, all boxed up and the lining. Um, I'm going to take the outer portion of the bag and I'm going to flip it right sides out. And like I said, it's really delicate. So you have to do this very carefully if you're using this type of insulating material. And I'm just going to start marking out where my handles are gonna go. So I'm actually going to just um, baste stitch them onto the bag, uh, just so that when I go to do the actual assembly of the whole thing, I don't have to worry about the handles getting lost or you know not being placed properly. So I'm just going to place them on either side of the bag, symmetrical to the side seams, I'm about four inches away from, like a four inch gap between them. And then I'll just sew a quick stitch. A base stitch is basically a, st a stitch that 
you're not going to see. It could be, you know, set at a really long stitch length, like a five, but it's just something that you kind of do temporarily so that um, things kind of just stay where they need to stay. So now I'm going to take that um, little, I don't even know what to call this, that piece. We're just going to place that over top of the outer of the bag. And we're going to place that with the right sides touching the right sides of the bag. We're going to line up those side seams and I'm just going to place a pin just so that it stays in place. And then I will get the lining of the bag and I will put that inside out and place that over top of the outer fabric. Again, lining up those side seams. So because of all of this shuffling and moving the fabric, this is why I prefer basting those handles just because, you know, you'll probably end up losing them on the inside and then they might get twisted or it's just easier just to have them on ready to go. So I'm just going to make sure all of those raw edges are lined up and put a pin in it. And we're going to leave about a four inch gap on one side, which should fit between the handles. So depending on how far apart your handles go, make sure it's just in between. And then we're just gonna sew all the way around, leaving that gap between the handles. And then after that, we are going to flip the bag carefully, uh, right side out. Um, yeah, like I said, that, that the material is really delicate. I, I, I feel like I'm a broken record. <laughs> so I had to do it very, very carefully very delicately. I feel like this is when I should have the, the Jeopardy music going because sometimes it takes so long. But it is so cute. Don't you just love this ice cream print? I think I got it over at Hobby Lobby. So now I'm going to tuck in that unnamed piece because I don't know what to call it um, on the inside and of course push that lining down in and then I'm just going to iron the edge of the bag. And then that hole, you're just going to make sure that those raw edges are tucked in and you make, you make it look as uniform as possible because we're gonna do top stitch to close up that hole as well as you know top stitching around the whole entire bag. And then I'd probably put a couple pins in it just so that it is nice and doesn't go anywhere, especially when you do this little um, the little hole opening there. So I did put some pins further down just to keep that piece down inside the bag. And then we're going to do a top stitch all the way around the edge of the bag. Like I said, we're closing up that hole, so do it, you know, an eighth of an inch away. But after that, then we're going to do two more top stitches beside this seam. So you're just going to take it out of the machine and then move your press of foot down about a quarter of an inch, I'd say. And then again, do a seam all the way around and then move it again, do a seam all the way around. And this is just gonna help sort of sink that piece that has no name <laughs> on the inside of the bag. So this is the completed bag. Um, now all I need to do is put in my cord. I'm going to be using one long cord because I am using that little cincher plastic thingy. Um, but you could, you know, not use that and have two cords. So one cord would go inside the one side and then another cord would go in the other side because there is openings at each like seam. So as you can see, um, like where I come out here, you could have one cord and then have another one continue on. But I'm just gonna do the one with my little cincher doohickey thing. And this one's really cute. I love the pink translucent. And then we will make sure that the, um, the bag is completely flat so that you can measure out where your like how long your cord is going to be tied off in a knot and then you can just cut off your excess. With this type of cord I would also probably singe off the edges with a lighter. And I'm just going to give it a little test run and it is 
absolutely perfect. I love it. You can cinch it up a lot tighter than that. And yeah, you're pretty much ready to go. So how cute is this? Perfect for, you know, a little lunch at the park or, you know, going to the zoo or maybe you can take it to work. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be alerted of new and fun tutorials. So thank you so much for watching. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.